Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy of Long Long Honeymoon. Today we're talking destinations. Specifically, we're talking about Southern Utah. And I have to say, if we were making our top five list of the best places to RV camp in North America, Southern Utah would be making that number because it's definitely a top five kind of place. So in this video, we're gonna share with you at least 10 tips for RV camping in Southern Utah, home of the Mighty Five, five fantastic national parks. All right guys, so we are staying in Moab. So tip number one is to use Moab, Utah as a home base for the three parks that I'm gonna tell you about. We've got Arches, we've got Canyonlands, which are both national parks, and then Dead Horse Point, which is a state park. So the good thing about Moab is it kind of has everything you need. There are plenty of restaurants, there's some decent grocery stores there, there's a few breweries, that sort of thing. They have Jeep rentals, four-wheel drive off-roading is very popular in the Moab area. And then they also have sort of those dune buggy rentals as well. Razors. The one thing to remember when you head to Moab is Camping is limited if you want to be in a campground with any sort of facilities. Um, there's probably maybe eight or nine RV parks in the town of Moab, and they stay pretty booked. Now, we were staying in a full hookup campground, but there are plenty of places around there to boondock. I'm sure there's plenty of free boondocking. We did see one overnight parking area just a few miles outside of town, and they were actually charging $5 a night. If you don't need the hookups, there are plenty of places around Moab to stay at very low cost. Arches National Park has one campground and good luck getting in is all I can say. It's it, a gorgeous campground. It has phenomenal views, but it is booked all the time. As far as Canyonlands goes, they have a couple of campgrounds there as well. Canyonlands is pretty removed from the town. So if you're wanting to go into town for dinner or that sort of thing, you know, you're looking at probably a 45 minute drive one way, would you say? Mm -hmm. But as far as traveling to those parks from Moab, super easy. I mean, Arches is eight minutes north of the town of Moab. I mean, it's so close. And then of course, like I said, Canyonlands is about a 45 minute drive. Something else to remember when you are hiking in these two national parks, or really anywhere in Southern Utah, it's really hot a lot of the time and there is no shade. If you go to Arches and you're hiking, there's no shade. If you're in Canyonlands and hiking, there's no shade. So when you go hiking, I highly suggest that you bring at least twice the amount of water you normally bring, if not three times the amount. I believe the park recommends you bring a gallon per person and you will need it. In fact, people die on their trails every year from dehydration and heat stroke. So just remember that. I would suggest hiking in the early morning or late afternoon. Wear lots of sunscreen. Bring more sunscreen with you to reapply it. Wear a hat if you can. It's not a bad idea to bring a small umbrella if you just really needed some shade to recover from the sun for a few minutes because there are no trees around to give you any sort of protection or respite from the sun. Use your bum. Yeah, some of those short hikes may prove to be a little more challenging than you think due to the heat and due to sometimes there are steep incline yeah. going up these hills. And those rocks radiate heat. So not only, you know, do you have the heat beaming down on you from above, the rocks that you're walking on are hot and sort of reflecting the sun as well. So you're sort of catching it from top and bottom. <laughs> Gravy and IPA, fuel for living. <laughs> one final tip about Moab and Utah in general, and this one's for you beer drinkers out there. Beer laws and alcohol laws in Utah are very, shall we say, unique. <laughs> I'm not being critical. It's just really unusual when you go to a brew pub and you can't get a full strength beer. So a very important tip for you beer drinkers is to ask your server if they have any full strength beers available on the menu. Yeah. And sometimes they will point to a full strength beer, maybe in a can, 
but at least you will be able to enjoy a proper IPA at the end of the day. Otherwise, you're going to get Utah's version of beer out of the tap, and this is true of every brew pub in Utah, and it's going to be slightly stronger than cherry Kool-Aid. <laughs> and in Moab, don't forget to visit Dead Horse Point State Park. Mm -hmm. It is a fantastic state park. It's not a national park. It's not affiliated with canyon lands or with arches, but it is a spectacular view, mm -hmm. and it's well worth the 10 bucks or so that you pay to get into it. When I saw Dead Horse Point, my first thought was, okay, Utah wanted to hang on to this <laughs> as a state park. They weren't willing to hand this over to the federal government right. because Dead Horse Point is such a spectacular view. Yeah. So it's well worth going out there to see it. And I would say that Canyonlands and Dead Horse Point, I think their views are almost better than the Grand Canyon, in my opinion. Do you think? Yeah, I felt like Dead Horse Point and Canyonlands offered more striking, spectacular, scenic views than the Grand Canyon. They just don't get the press and the hype that the Grand right. Canyon gets. <laughs> Sorry, you Grand Canyon aficionados. We love the Grand Canyon too, but I think once you see Canyonlands and Dead Horse Point, you will agree that it doesn't get much better than that, at least if you're into canyons. <laughs> <laughs> so... I know I videoed these formations and I was thinking that the drone might be down here, but unfortunately I'm not seeing it. Do not crash your drone into a canyon because if you do, you'll have to hike out there and beat yourself up risking your neck to get it. Ask me how I know. And it wasn't a canyon in a national park or a state park. It no, was just out on the side of the highway. Just a run-of-the-mill so. canyon. But, you know, when you go to southern Utah, pretty soon you're going to realize that the entire area is kind of qualified to be national park or state park status. <laughs> really There's is. a lot of red canyon, yeah. a lot of red cliffs, a lot of red rock. And so there are a lot of places where you can go off-roading in a Jeep or a Razor, or yes, you can even fly your drone yeah. that is properly registered with the FAA. Yep. <laughs> oh, and by the way, here's what I had to climb to get up here. Pretty rough outing for the old Phantom. Uh, pretty rough. So how far up did you have to go to find it? Did you video it? Oh, about 10 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a job. Now that was an adventure. Not uh, the kind I want to have very often. But crazy, crazy. Can we buy one with collision avoidance? Yes, I think that's a splendid idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this valley that we've been walking through. It's really crazy. Can you imagine being here a thousand years ago? It's really just hard to believe that people were living here that long ago, carving into these rocks, exploring all of this. Crazy stuff. Next tip involves Capitol Reef National Park. Capitol Reef, you may not have heard of. It's probably the smallest of all of these parks, and it kind of slips under the radar for a lot of people, but we absolutely loved our time in Capitol Reef mm -hmm. National Park. It's a relatively small park, yeah. but very scenic. You have to do the scenic drive in Capitol Reef. It's got to be one of the most beautiful, unique. unusual, <laughs> unique drives and stretches of road anywhere in North America. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I don't think we've done any sort of drive anywhere near as unusual as it is. There's so many drives in national parks that are, you know, on these cliff tops or mountain tops where you've got these really scenic overlooks. And Capitol Reef is sort of the opposite. You're sort of down in a canyon, driving through with these tall walls of canyon on either side of you. And it's just a really unique 
experience. And it's beautiful. And another great thing to do in Capitol Reef National Park is to go see the petroglyphs, mm -hmm. which are basically old carvings in the rock left by Native Americans who lived there many centuries ago. And there's something about being in Capitol Reef to me that makes you really think about the passage of time. I mean, I think that scenic drive, being down in those canyons and seeing those petroglyphs, mm -hmm. it just makes you think about the way the continent was many hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some of those areas in there that probably haven't changed very much in many hundreds of years. So Capitol Reef is a special little park. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably not going to spend a week there. Right. But, you know, the time you spend there, I think, will be very rewarding. Capitol Reef basically doesn't have any sort of um, amenities there. Like there, there is a campground that has bathhouses or bathrooms. I'm not sure if they have showers or not. I never went inside them. So camping is very limited there. So you might want to call ahead and make sure they've got a spot for you. There is a town about 20 minutes, I would say, west of Capitol Reef that has a very small grocery store that's basically the size of a gas station, and a couple of nice restaurants. So you do have a few options there, but again, load up before you leave Moab, go to the grocery store and get what you need because there won't be a lot of option in Capitol Reef. And that kind of leads us to the next point <laughs> about Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon is beautiful. The town that it's in, I don't know if I would even call it a town. There's a couple of gas stations, a couple of restaurants, and a couple of resorts. And the resort is where the grocery store is. And basically, it's like a 7-Eleven type of, you know, grocery store with double the price that you would normally pay anywhere else. With the exception of alcohol, the alcohol prices were reasonable, which I thought was kind of funny. So again, really load up your camper either if you're coming from the west or you're coming from the east because when you're in that Capitol Reef, Bryce Canyon area, there just really aren't grocery stores that are going to have anything beyond, you know, some sandwich meat and a bread and basic milk. Yeah, if you have to go grocery shopping in Bryce Canyon, you're going to pay a pretty steep price yeah. for just the basics. I mean, we know at least double because frankly They've got you. Yeah, they <laughs> you know? know that you don't have any other choice. I mean, I was looking at a box of crackers, like Triscuit crackers that normally would cost me three bucks at Walmart, and I think they were like seven fifty. So I didn't buy them because I thought that was ridiculous. But you know, they know that you don't have any other choice. <laughs> so I had a manwich. Yeah, you did. That was the first time he's probably eaten a manwich. My in first manwich years. in decades, but it was delicious. <laughs> I was so happy about that manwich. The other thing I would say about Bryce Canyon is it is at a higher elevation, so it's going to be a lot colder there than what you experience at Arches Canyonlands or even Zion. So when we were there, things were starting to shut down. the The campgrounds within the national park had already closed. Our campground that we were staying at right outside the park, we were one of the maybe dozen people there and it was a park that probably could hold 200 RVs. So, and it was cold. They were expecting snow. So we didn't stick around for long. So Bryce Canyon will be back for you. Just note that, that it is at a higher elevation. So you could be sweating it out in Arches or Zion and then you get to Bryce Canyon and you're gonna be freezing. Bryce Canyon definitely merits a visit. I mean, the views there are so unique. When you are driving from Moab to Capitol Reef or Capitol Reef to Bryce Canyon, you are driving through some very scenic areas that have some 
um, state park stops, some, you know, scenic overlooks, that sort of thing. I think there's a place called Goblin Valley that we actually didn't stop at just because we were sort of pressed for time. But there's a lot to see and do there that we didn't get to do, and we had a lot of time. So it's one of those things you got to pick and choose where you want to go and just focus on those and know that you'll come back another time to see the rest. Yeah, it's like when you go to a great restaurant, you can't actually order everything on the menu. Right. You got to select what you can swallow on that particular visit and yeah. come back for more at a later time. Right. Finally, and of course, we have worked from east to west in this tips video because that's the way we did Southern Utah, mm -hmm. but we'll talk about Zion. Zion is really beautiful. You know, these canyons are just very unique, I think. And the fact that you can do this hike where you go back through the water is really cool. We don't have the gear today to do it. We're sort of here on a, a quick and dirty trip. But we'll definitely be back and do it because it looks really beautiful. It is crowded. I mean, we're here October 30th and this is how many people are back here. So I've seen pictures in the summertime where there are literally like hundreds of people. So I think if you're planning on coming, avoid the peak season if at all possible because I think you'll just enjoy it so much better if there are fewer people. You do have to take a shuttle to get back here. So of course that means you have to wait for a shuttle. We were lucky today we stepped right on one. We've heard during the height of the season, you can wait 30 or 45 minutes to get on a shuttle. You know, that's just something to take into consideration when you're considering visiting Zion. The scenery in Zion is absolutely spectacular. I would say it's unlike even any of the other Utah parks. It has its own unique feel. It sort of dawned on me that we're looking at mountains in the desert. <laughs> and because a lot of the rock formations and, and they're really mountains because <laughs> you're talking about just sheer rock cliffs jutting uh, more than a thousand feet up into the sky. That's what really strikes me about Zion. And then if you look on the side of a lot of these rock cliffs, you will see some growth, some greenery because the, uh, they, they have what they call weeping walls quite often. And you've got actually water running down the side of this desert rock, which is really unusual. So you see some sites in Zion that I think are so unique and just strikingly beautiful because not only are these huge mountains, but they're composed of kind of a reddish rock quite often. So the colors are incredible. And to be here in autumn, as you can see, there's some autumn colors in the trees. So uh, I think October is a fantastic time to visit. Zion is kind of the biggest, baddest, most popular of the mighty five Utah national parks. Mm -hmm. Zion is incredible, but it is also incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. Zion is quite close to St. George, Utah, which is a pretty good sized town. And it's not terribly far away from Las Vegas. I mean, I think it's probably a five or six hour drive from Las mm -hmm. Vegas. But I do get the impression that a lot of people come over from Nevada to visit Zion. Zion has been experiencing record traffic. You're going to probably encounter crowds no matter what time you go. Mm -hmm. Something to be aware of. If you enter the park from the east or if you're leaving to the east, you'll have to go through this tunnel. And it's an old tunnel. It's very narrow. And they actually have to stop traffic from entering on each side if you're in an RV mm -hmm. and you will pay a fee for this okay yeah so basically you have to buy a, a ticket to get you through the tunnel and they close off the tunnel to traffic while you drive through the tunnel because you have to drive on the center line because if you drive off to one side and stay in your lane the top of your RV is going to hit the, the arch of the tunnel so it's a mile long. It's yeah. a really long tunnel. It's a really interesting tunnel to drive through. 
And driving through it with no other traffic is even more interesting, I think. Yeah. But be aware of that and know that they stop doing that at a certain point every day. And depending on the time of year, that time is different. So I would call ahead and find out what time they stop letting RVs through the tunnel because at a certain point in the day, that tunnel is no longer manned and they can't shut off the traffic for you to drive through. Right. So make sure you know what time that tunnel is going to be open or closed um, to RV traffic because that will affect your visit. Because if you have to do a drive around, there's no other drive through the park. You would have to route around the park. And I think it's like maybe a three hour drive. It would be a long detour. (laughs) I mean, in other words, if you don't make it through the tunnel before they kind of shut off RV passage, Mm -hmm. you're out of luck for that day. You're just going to have to wait to the next day. And I believe the ticket cost around 20 bucks. Yeah, so, it was like 15 or 20. Something like that. So just be prepared for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were a little bit surprised by it when we first arrived because it was our first time in Zion, and I didn't know that we were going to have to deal with that. But it was a very interesting experience going through that tunnel. Something else to know about Zion, they have, I believe, two campgrounds. They're not huge by any means, considering the amount of traffic that comes to that park, because Zion isn't really a very large park. I mean, you can drive from one side to the other in probably 45 minutes, maybe. But their campgrounds are right on the western side of the park, right as you go in the entrance. And they can be really hard to get into because there are so many people that come to Zion. So don't worry about it if you can't get into the park, because there are several several RV parks right outside that western uh, entrance and we stayed in a private RV park when we were there and I mean it was like a 10 minute drive to the entrance it was super close Um, they have several grocery stores there lots of places to eat so you don't have to worry about provisions or that sort of thing there but just know that if you can't get into the national park don't worry about it because there's so many RV parks right outside that western entrance that you'll find somewhere that can take you. And if you're there in the hot summertime, you might prefer staying at a private RV park because it is so hot there. I mean, we were there in October and it was still 80 degrees during the day. So if you're there in the middle of summer, you may want that full hookup campground because you might want to crank the AC. (laughs) Yeah, and even if you're staying inside the park, if you're going to get sort of deep into certain portions of Zion, you're going to have to take the shuttle. Yeah. Because everybody takes the shuttle to get deep into some of these most popular hiking destinations in Zion. Yeah. When the crowds are really thick at Zion, you're going to be waiting in a very long line just to get on the shuttle. Now, I think they do a good job with the shuttle, and they do a good job keeping those lines moving. Yeah, they're but- pretty constant. I mean... You know, they've they've got the manpower there working those shuttles, but like we were there in October, which was sort of a lower, you know, uh, crowd level time, and it was still crowded, you know. So that's it, guys. At least 10 tips for <laughs> RV camping in southern Utah. We don't claim to be the definitive experts on southern Utah, but we have been to all of the Mighty Five, mm-hmm. and we really look forward to going back because there is so much to see and do in Utah. It is one of the best RV camping destinations in all of North America. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any great tips to share with our community about RV camping in Utah, please post a comment on this video. If you are new to our channel on YouTube, please subscribe. Subscriptions ensure that you will never miss a video. That's right. And if you want to make sure you get an alert every time we post a new video, click the bell next to the subscribe button. And that way you will get a notification as soon as a video goes live. You can ring our bell. (laughs) Also, if you liked this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And until next time, lo lo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Good old telemarketers. Call from Santa Monica, PA.
This is going on the blooper reel.